standing on a balcony outside the embassy that has been his refuge these past three and a half years, Julian Assange hailed, with characteristic understatement, a victory of historical importance. A lawyer representing the Swedish woman he's alleged to have raped greeted the suggestion of a UN panel that he'd been arbitrarily detained somewhat differently, calling it insulting and offensive. Mr Assange remains just where he was in that embassy. Joining us to discuss what on earth might happen next, Edward Garnier, former Solicitor General, joins us on the line from Leicester. And also here in the studio, Lisa Longstaff, co-founder of the organisation Women Against Rape. Morning to you both. Morning. Morning. Um, Edward Garnier, first of all, whatever you think of that opinion, what is your legal opinion as to whether it has any significance? I don't think it has any practical significance at all. Uh, Mr Assange will, unless he volunteers to come out, remain in the embassy to the consternation, no doubt, of his Ecuadorian hosts. Uh, He remains uh, uh, under uh, a liability to be deported to uh, Sweden, where he uh, can face justice. Uh, and that's about the end of it. I, I'm afraid I, I rather agree with uh, Lord MacDonald, the former DPP, who says this thing has become beyond parody. And yet, here it is, it's a UN panel, they say legal, their legal judgment is that he's held and detained unfairly and unjustly. Could that not be deployed in a court here or in Sweden indeed, or even in the European Court of Human Rights? I suppose in theory it might be able to be deployed, but then um, we've got um, a, a, a split decision, but uh, there are three uh, uh, relatively obscure academics who say one thing, one who says quite the opposite, and one who refused to take part. I I really do think it's absurd, but um, there we are. If that's what Mr Assange is relying upon, um, well, good luck to him. Lisa Longstaff um, here from Women Against Rape. Should he not simply just come out, face justice, go to court, defend his innocence? Well, if Sweden is really determined to... um, to challenge him over these alleged um, sexual violence allegations, why don't they simply come and question him? He has already um, given himself up in Sweden back in 2010, was questioned. The case has been dropped once and reopened. If they're really serious that, this, that, the, that the rape allegations are what they're after him for, why don't they just question well, him? Well, Sweden's interior minister is quoted as saying, we've done what we could to enable the Swedish authorities to question him at the embassy, but it has not been possible. Well, I don't know why. Um, people get questioned all the time who are accused of crimes. There may be people who are a bit puzzled here. You're here for women against rape. Uh, are you women against rape unless the allegation is made against someone you sympathise with ideologically? No, not at all. Um, we, what, we're very fed up that rape is often used by politicians and governments to promote their own agendas. We are very concerned about... Um, if Julian Assange was uh, was taken to Sweden, he would be extradited to the US because he is being pursued for the leaks that WikiLeaks did. So give the choice of believing the women or believing uh, those who are prosecuting him or believing Mr Assange, I'm sorry. You choose to believe him? No, it, not at all. We haven't commented on the validity of what the women have said. We haven't seen their statements. Um, but what we are fed up with is the way they've been trashed on the internet and in um, the media, as a lot of women who um, report rape have been. Edward Garnier, there is a suspicion, which I think Lisa Longstaff is pursuing here, that in some way Mr Assange is in truth a political prisoner, that even if that's not the motivation of the women involved, even if perhaps it's not the the motivation of the Swedish authorities, he'll end up in America, he will end up uh, facing, as it were, not so much justice as persecution for his political views. Well, I think that's a little hyperbolic, if I may say so. Uh, Mr Assange has been uh, accused by the Swedish prosecution authorities of certain serious crimes. Uh, He has been, uh, through the British court system, uh, resisting that uh, deportation application uh, for many years. Uh, I think it went all the way up to the Supreme Court. That was rejected. He was remanded on bail on certain conditions. He uh, fled from bail into the Ecuadorian embassy. Uh, If he was serious about uh, wishing to challenge these accusations, presumably he would would do so uh, in court uh, in Sweden. Lisa Longstaff, Uh, just spell out what it is that you fear will happen to him. Well, um, we are very concerned about what will happen to him and how disproportionate it could be. <clears throat> We've been doing this for 40 years and we are very shocked by the unusual zeal by which he's been pursued. 
unlike many other rapists that we've seen reported, you know, up and down the country, hundreds and thousands of people have been coming forward, particularly who've suffered abuse as children and rape as children. And there have been very, very few prosecutions. There have been very few questions asked about what the role of the authorities have been in these rapes. And yet you see, you know, 11, 12 million pounds spent on, um, uh, you know, persecuting Julian Assange. I think it's totally disproportionate. Edward I don't think Garney? the money would be better spent elsewhere. Mr Assange has not been persecuted. He has been uh, accused by the Swedish prosecution authorities of, of serious sexual crime. Uh, it's... It's up to the British authorities here to respond uh, as, a, as a friendly country to Sweden uh, to their application for his deportation on a proper evidential basis. That's been done. He's resisted it. Uh, he has uh, had the benefit of the British legal system. His application to be released has been rejected, and he ought to uh, f face the music and, and go to Sweden. The Swe if we send him to Sweden, we're not sending him to some uncivilised country. He will be treated <laughs> fairly under the law. And, I mean, was that it, a, a laugh or a hollow laugh? I yes, don't know, I don't that know what, was a sarcastic what, laugh. Well, very good, very good. Go on, that, Sweden that, has a very low uh, conviction rate well, was, for rape just, and just, doesn't have a reputation just, for being a centre of justice. To, I was just going to finish my sentence. Um, I, I, I don't share the same sense of humour as my co-interviewee. But uh, it seems to me that the... Uh, the, the arguments that Lisa Longstaff is putting forward, they may or may not be right, but they've got nothing whatever to do with this case. And n nobody is volunteering to spend uh, £11 million, pounds, whatever it is the, the Metropolitan Police have had to spend on this. Uh, the, the reason why this money is being spent is because Mr uh, Assange, as a fugitive from justice, has chosen to go into the embassy uh, and has led to these no. consequences entirely of his own volition. Let Lisa Longstaff no, respond. The reason it's been spent is that the Swedish government refuses to come and question him and finish up with this business once and for all. Well, I've just put the say... Swedish Interior Minister to you who says the opposite. In fact, let me just uh, end with this point, Lisa Longstaff. Don't you really face a choice? You are either women against rape or you're a campaigner for Julian Assange. This attempt to be both uh, it stretches you to almost breaking point, doesn't it? No, I'm afraid it doesn't because we take a principal position about rape and I must say, you know, the arrogance of the spokespeople for the UK government over the last um, couple of days since this UN ruling totally dismissing it as if the UN doesn't exist. Well, it is one UN body. Uh, I think that's why they've done it. So there's a debate on that body too. But Lisa Longstaff, thank you very much indeed.